Welcome to the Gruen Next Door. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. But now my main area of expertise is uh, canines. Dogs. To the layperson. I am your co-host, Chris Green. And I'm Sarah Green. Have a fantastic week. And remember, folks, life is short. Play with your pet. Okay, guys, go in my bedtime. And now our feature presentation. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> my master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk, squirrel. Hi everybody and welcome to episode 6 of the Groomer Next Door video podcast. I'm your co-host Chris Green. Sitting next to me as always is the lovely and pleasant and ever so delightful Sarah. Hello. <clears throat> well this week we are joined by a Bernese Mountain Dog and I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, so anyways, we, um, we chose this dog a couple weeks ago just because of the sheer size and desire of this pup. And we wanted to actually give everybody an opportunity to see another wonderful uh, looking dog that actually is gorgeous, a lot of fun to be around. And we wanted to give you guys a lot of different tips if you're actually looking to adopt this type of dog. Very much so. Um, we're going to keep the, the dog um, name and everything like that to ourselves. Yeah. We're going to do it this time. Uh, we have our particular reasons, just trust us. Uh, but she had a sibling come in. Uh, a couple days prior for a full-on D shed and that's what she's getting today too so not only is she doing just a regular bath and brush we're also doing a D shed because these guys shed like crazy oh yeah and if you're not prepared to handle that then these type of dogs any double coat dogs aren't for you very true um, and you'll pretty much we are not going to go into the full detail I didn't edit the full detail of the D shed like we did last week if you didn't join us last week um, you actually noticed that we had a German Shepherd dog and that had a D shed um, this one you know I kind of edited everything together kind of made it work out pretty well um, as you can tell Bernie's have big they're big hairy dogs as Sarah had said we had hair everywhere and this one's actually smaller than the one that I did on my own all by my lonesome that's right um, it was a snowy day um, yes. one of our major snow days um, a few weeks ago and it was a real real challenge for you because you thought you were going to do just fine yeah I thought that we're just going to come in do a dog or two and call it good and then it's like oh yeah you got a ginormous D shed you got to deal with and Chris stayed at home because there's no point in you coming home you can stay and spend the day with Claire and enjoy her company make sure that Claire has a parent around as much as possible and I'll just take care of it yeah yeah you were uh, you're you, you had told me oh I'm good I got this there's no big deal I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this, do this years, yeah. But for the last year and a half, I mean, with having me around, it, it's it's kind of um, changed the way that we do grooming or the way you did grooming. Well, what's nice is that my arms don't hurt, my back doesn't hurt, my feet don't hurt. No, now my know? back, my feet, my arms, they hurt. And yet I still can do the grooming part and not have such problems where I can't play with Claire. I can't have fun with Claire. Um, so it's actually worked out very well on us. Well, these guys don't come in um, very often. They come in maybe once every few months. So we have no problem with using the greaser to really get down deep and get that dirt, grime, and grease off um, and loosens it up for when the Prima comes in with the good shampoo, it will just obliterate any kind of uh, 
gunk. Right. That's dried up, up oils skin. and uh, and dirt. all the dirt and grime. Because yeah, yeah. these dogs love to play. They love to run. They <clears throat> love the snow. I mean, if they're going to get mud, if there's a mud pole, they're going to find it. <laughs> they are that type of dog. And then another thing that's so great about Bernie's is their compassion for family. Mm-hmm. They are so lovable. Um, in my years of grooming, I don't think I've ever seen a aggressive Bernese Mountain Dog. Even rescued ones from bad situations, they never seem to have a mean bone in their body. So. Now, you were mentioning the degreaser part. Now, if you just joined us for our very for the very first time, and this is the first video you've seen of us, you'll notice that we put degreaser on all the dogs in our video. Um, but we do have a video coming up, next one. Mm -hmm. That will show no degreaser and will explain why that dog doesn't get a degreaser. So you'll have to tune in next week for that one. Yes, definitely tune in for next week. It's going to be a a Smooth Coated Collie who ranked in the top 10 of Smooth Coated Collies in all of the U.S. Yep, it's a very amazing dog. Um, So tune in for that one. Mm -hmm. Um, Normally we don't plug all you know future episodes but with the way we've been shooting and the way we've been you know operating this podcast we have to stay ahead of ourselves um for some of you who follow us on our facebook page the grimmer next door podcast you kind of get a daily um, opportunity to see what's going on with us because we keep everything you know as open possible um a lot of you guys actually are watching from overseas which is amazing um we've been we've mentioned it on our uh, audio podcast again you know absolutely amazing hearing from you guys all around the world um a lot of you guys i've noticed one thing um these types of dogs double coated dogs are more popular overseas people are ridiculously passionate about their their double coated dogs and it's awesome because then you get to hear their perspective and different you know climates that are different different um landscapes that are different so it's a lot of fun and they tend to be bigger too yep uh, for some reason, any kind of breeding in America, they, they breed them smaller. Um, I don't know why, other than it, we live in tight quarters, so it's <laughs> important to have a small animal, even though they want a big dog, but yet really isn't that big. But, um, yeah, it's kind of nifty to see the different pets all over. Yeah, it is. And, you know, one thing that people will do is they'll send pictures of their own, you know, dogs, whatever breed. Um, so I get to see a lot of different things on a weekly uh, basis. I get to see a lot of different uh, breeds of dog, get to talk to different people from all over the world. Um, so I'm hoping that wherever you're watching this video, you're actually, you know, you have this dog or you want to actually adopt a, this type of breed. So that's why it's, we want to make sure we're, we're continuously going about I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, you know what? Groomers Best should be paying us to do this. And why? Because when you're washing, it's boom, Groomers Best. Right there where shampoos hang, or bottled shampoo hang. I'm going to have to get in touch with them. Yeah, they should pay us for this. <laughs> well, we should be getting paid for this. I mean, we, we do two shows a week, internationally known. I think we should. Oh, my goodness. So, Any- yeah, keep going. <clears throat> uh. So now we're applying the really nice shampoo. We have two different types of shampoo that we can use. Um, uh, well, we have ones, more than just two. We have well, lots of different I'm talking about with the D-Shed process. Ah, ah. We can use the um, D-Shed shampoo or the D-Shed solution. And the D-Shed shampoo is really for short hair dogs like Labradors and such. Uh, with pups with this much hair and this thick of hair, we use a solution afterwards. Mm-hmm. So right now we're using, if I'm not, if I'm correct, it is a conditioning shampoo. Yes. Um, so whatever that we're stripping out with the degreaser will be soaked in with the conditioning from the soap. And then after the soap has been applied and rinsed off, the d solution is another conditioner too. And so it's hydrating the skin on top of that. Um, One thing I definitely suggest, folks, I know it's more expensive to take your big dog to a pet groomer, um, but I believe when it's this important, you really should. Um, Even if it's only a couple times a year and the rest of the year you're just rinsing them off with the hose. Um, If you were to wash the dog in your own bathtub, uh, 
please, folks, rinse, 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 yes. rinse, rinse. These dogs are so susceptible to hot spots from shampoo not being washed out correctly um, or shampoo that is formulated for humans. Uh, I've had people bring in VO5, <laughs> Suave. Suave is what I was thinking of, yeah. Uh, don't, folks, don't, don't, don't. If it's cheap for your hair, it's definitely bogus for the dog's hair. Um, and if you've never heard our podcast, our audio podcast, well, all of the episodes are also on YouTube. If you're not aware, all of them are on YouTube. The audio podcast is on there. You'll hear us talk about shampoos and, you know, the importance of actually putting something that's quality on your dog because it's definitely a different kind of hair than what we have. Very much. And <clears throat> if you can't rinse it off properly because you got a shower head mm. and you don't have a detachable nozzle that only puts out stuff that's power powerful enough for a human's head... It's not going to be power, powerful enough to get down underneath all that and rinse them clean. So, you know, if they start popping up with spots where they're chewing at themselves, you're like, why are you chewing? I just washed you. Well, yeah. that's the reason why you just washed them and didn't rinse them good enough. Well, you also have another way that they're going to be chewing themselves. You may have rinsed just fine, but they might just not have the right proper nutrition. Nutrition also has that effect as well. It really could. Um, and that's a question that's asked of us a lot. It's well, I take my dog to the groomer a lot, but it still has dry skin. It still itches a great deal. And the first question, you know, that's asked is, "What are you feeding your pet?" It, that should be the first question asked. Well, that's the first some question people, we ask. Sometimes or you ask. I've noticed, unfortunately, going to veterinarians, they don't want to talk nutrition. The only time they want to talk nutrition, it's um, what they're selling. Mm. Or if they're not selling anything, well, just do the shots, the cortisone shots yeah. or the, the allergy shots. No, folks, there's better ways around it. If you're washing a dog, say you take it to the professional groomer, you wash them, you know your groomer's doing a good job because there are some shady groomers out there. you got to be careful. But if you know your groomer's doing a good job and the dog's still itching, there's probably something more. If you're feeding anything from the grocery store and the dog's itching, that's why. <laughs> I can't, I, you know what, I, I say this every time, I can't believe how many times, you know, I, I love up on a dog where I give him a kiss or just gonna, you know. Look at that face. Oh, Look I know. Look at that face. I, 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 I do this on autopilot every day and I don't realize, you know, after a while you don't realize, you know, five, six, seven dogs, depending on how many big ones you had in your day, you don't realize how much love and affection you're giving these dogs until you watch the video playback and you're like, oh my gosh, I really, you know. <laughs> well, that's that's the problem with speed groomers. Yeah. They're, you know, when they get in there and those are some hideous pair of pants. <laughs> ADD, huh? ADD. Okay. They're Hawaiian floral yeah. faded. Yeah, we're, we're recording here. Oh, okay. Um, this is the problem with us. When we uh, actually record out in public, we end up having ADD and we're too busy looking at what's around us to actually be fit, you know focused on our actual show i don't care how good looking you are you're not good looking to pull those off all right anyway, sorry uh where was i i don't know i have no idea you you threw me off with the whole floral hawaiian shorts <laughs> midwest floral oh hawaiian no you know we're landlocked i can't i can't think of anything now um well, i remember saying look at that face they're so sweet um i lost you well, while you're thinking about that, uh, let's talk. A, let me talk a, a little bit about if you're actually looking to adopt a dog. That's you know, a Bernese Mad Dog. Uh, the the one question you have to ask yourself is: Does your schedule and lifestyle allow you to spend quality time with your dog? And a lot of people don't actually think about this. This is where it comes back to a show we did at the very beginning, that it was dogs beyond your means. Um, dog above your means is not a matter of cost only it's a matter of your lifestyle um, do you have the time to actually invest in a dog like this you know a dog like this doesn't need to just lay on the couch all day wait for you to come home as if it was a chihuahua it actually well, even at that it's just any dog you, yeah but i mean some dogs can be more sufficient um on their own or sufficient oh. self-sufficient yes self-reliant there you go. That's a good Being word on too. Being their, on their own, that they can go and they can play with their toy. They'll run around the house. They have a doggy door. Uh, food and water's already left out. Some dogs can handle that, but then there's some dogs that just can't. 
And in order to keep your Bernese Mountain Dog healthy, it needs exercise because I've seen way too many of them get lazy and overweight and it happens quickly. Well, it's like before getting a Bernese, ask yourself if you have a dog-friendly lifestyle and are willing to spend quality time with your Bernese. So, you know, you're able, you know, to have good quality time with him or her. Well, see, the thing is with Bernese, they, they love. They have all this love to give. Mm -hmm. And they want to be around people, kids. They just want to be around somebody. So depression can start hitting in really I was going to cover that. I was going to get to that. Yeah. If they don't have somebody around. So if you're gone for more than eight hours a day, you might want to consider finding a doggy sitter. Yeah. Uh, you might want to consider daycare boarding. Um, I would I would even <clears throat> institute the, if you have a nice big backyard that's fenced in and you have a second dog for it to play with and be able to cohabitant with. Then that would be awesome. Yeah, I cohabitant. Cohabitant. Yeah, yeah. If you have, if they're able to, um, you know, you have to ask yourself: Do you have a small yard, but lots um, of parks, park time that you can actually take your dog to? Do you have that available to you? You know, like we were mentioning, if you if you actually live in other countries, some, you know, for instance, you know, you think of the countryside in England, where there's large, apart, you know, amounts of land where these people actually have. A house and there's no other houses for miles um, you live in you know look at us we, li we live in the Midwest and there's a lot of little small towns where people live in rural areas and they're able to have big dogs like this and they're able to run around the farm and stuff like that and they have little friends um, do you have a safe fenced in area out you know that's that's a big thing you know we're we're always talking about um, a big thing that's happening in the United States right now where people are actually going um, to rural areas or even even small suburban areas and they're noticing dogs of this kind of size uh, Bernese uh, German Shepherds any kind of dog that they can steal sell or even even use as a fighting dog So you got to be prepared. Dogs. Yep bait dogs as well So, you know if you have a dog like this, this is obviously a gorgeous dog It's not really what I'd call a fighting dog No, but it not. is a, it is a dog that you would sell and, and get top dollar and for. you would get top dollar so these you know back you know I, I don't even know what to call it backyard dog sales that are you know not of the up and up you know another thing you really want to think about with a dog like this is getting it microchipped making sure that you have as much as you possibly can microchipped get plenty of photos now now one thing with Bernese Mountain Dogs um, if you're not familiar with the breed you look at one Sometimes it feels like you looked at every single one of them <laughs> because they all have the same style. They all have the same look. So anything that is unique, that cannot be altered, like um, <clears throat> I groomed this one Bernese Mountain Dog back in California on the chest, the white made a heart shape, oh. made a big, huge heart shape. So I advised the owner then, hey, take plenty of pictures. So, you know, this is very unique and I... I've never seen another dog like that. So take a picture of it since Bernie's Mountain Dogs look so much alike. And there you know, are like, products now out there. Um, I'm not going to... I We've contacted a couple of them to do uh, stories on them. But there are a couple companies now where uh, little low jacks are part of... You know, little GPS systems are part of their, their whole system. Kind of like the, uh, the Fitbit systems that you wear on your arms. You yeah, it, it would be great to have a microchip, a low jack chip inside, and I don't think that's too far fetched. I think it's been done in certain places. Well, there's there's actual those. It's those, actually there. Yeah, you actually pay a monthly fee now. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's I what forgot. that's what I'm talking about. Oh, um, sorry, that that happened so long ago. I yeah, no, all no worries. Um, but there there's a great pro there's a lot of good products that are hitting the market now, and you put it on your dog's collar, and you can actually see the amount of exercise that it's doing. Um, you can track it. It's a monthly fee that you're paying. Um, I, I just wish they found some way of actually putting it surgically in the dog. True, but I, I don't think a lot of your your common thieves that are going to steal dogs really even know too much well, where to they, look. They might take the collar off. True. So once it's off, it's gone. True. Or if it breaks away out in the, the, the wilderness yeah. or out in the woods somewhere or in the city gets hung up on a, a chain link fence. Uh, so, if they found some way of actually surgically implanting the low jack into the dog, 
would be amazing. Then you can pinpoint within a certain vicinity of where that dog is, start calling its name, and go look for it. True. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost like your iPhone, uh, find my phone. Right. You know, too bad you don't have... I'm pretty sure that there are, you know, systems that are coming out. Um, I, I watch the internet all the time. Um, I haven't seen anything that's actually surgically implanted. Too bad we're not smart enough to come up with this stuff on our own. Well, we are. We just don't know how to actually build it. We've well, come up with I mean. the idea. Well, yeah. Anybody can come up with an idea. Well, it's ex- executing it that's an important part. Very true. <laughs> But, um, so take, um, good care of, um, of the actual, uh, I just lost where I was going. I saw something again. (laughs) Yeah, I I lose myself. (laughs) Make sure you take pictures of specific markings. Like, say, if you were to, um, have a, a dog with half face you know half black yeah. half white half tan phantom half, look yeah the, the more phantom of the opera look yeah um take a picture of it make sure you get details because it's very easy to say well this isn't your bernice oh, right yeah you know, right no it's not because you know dogs change color some places sometimes yeah so the more specific you get in the markings the better off you'd be to recovering your dog if lost stolen or resold to another home yeah very true and you know this is the sad part about owning dogs in general is that people are are more susceptible to steal dogs just for this stupid theft and uh it drives me nuts but you know with it with a dog like this take take precautions obviously you got to take as much as you can um now, the other thing is, is that can you provide a Bernese the opportunity for exercise, like we're talking about? A lot of questions that, that they ask you if, you know, you're actually thinking about doing this. I don't think a lot of people actually think about this stuff. You know, you look at a dog like this. I live in an area where I think I can actually have a dog that fits this lifestyle. Um, so the question is, can you actually, um, you know, self-support it? by the exercise you know and and exercise is one thing but it doesn't have the exercise doesn't have to be every day for two hours a day um you can do the weekends and really hone in on being able to exercise them um hire a dog dog walker you know you come in a couple times a week get the dog walk the dog for them you know and that helps with the their anxiety level it helps with keeping their heart rate where it's supposed to be and <clears throat> keeping these gorgeous creatures gorgeous and you know a lot of people what they don't realize is that i think animals have higher stress levels than humans in some sense i mean look at a cat if a cat's litter box has a few turds in it they stress out oh they stress out they absolutely go banana crazy over it and it's you know the same thing you know these these glorious dogs they they sit hour after hour and they're just kind of going uh i'm bored and it, you know it's one thing and boredom leads to chewing uh-huh. it leads to chewing on themselves mm-hmm. it leads to all sorts of horrible things you know a common question puppy buyers ask is how much exercise does a bernese need you know and it's a question that, that you have to ask and it depends on the actual bernese several on leash walks per day or at least two 15 to 30 minute walks and some playtime actually will suffice um so if you actually have like a dog park or you have a walking path um or you just have a nice little street to walk a little suburban area just to go for a walk that bonding alone is amazing for your dog yeah and you know this this part is kind of controversial Um, depending on who you talk to and what they want to to say but Bernese mountain dogs are very intelligent very smart and very trainable Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh, I can see Bernese mountain dogs being off leash trained oh gosh yeah you know our dogs are off leash trained if we have a chihuahua off leash trained I'm pretty sure this dog can do it so I know that's controversial whether you should keep a, a leash and collar on to keep the safety or you know just having them walk with you uh, but these dogs are so intelligent they are. and the problem with intelligent dogs they get bored yeah and so they need to go out so 
get a ball, get a frisbee. Uh, there's something called a Kong flyer, which is one of those invisible, you know, frisbees that won't hurt their teeth if it smacks mm-hmm. them in the mouth because it's made out of the, the Kong rubber. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> you just throw it, let them catch it, teach them how to play. You know, they, they look to us or look to their playmates, um, their litter mates, mm-hmm. to learn how to play. Well, after a certain age, they go their own ways mm-hmm. and they still need to be taught how to play. So that's where we come in as humans to help take care of them and teach them, hey, look, this is a ball. You chase the ball. You squeeze the ball. You tear the ball up when you want to or or don't tear it up. Or don't, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, that brings up the question. What about exercising with other dogs? Other owners believe another dog will serve as an exercise companion. Some dogs play well together. We've seen our dogs play really well together, but at the beginning, you know, when they first get to know each other, not always the greatest. So, you know, here's one thing that it may sound a little strange. If you have children, you understand play dates. Same thing applies with dogs. You can get dogs to have play dates. Right. There's, um, there's a customer that comes in to board. Uh, we don't groom them. Someone else does. But the dog loves coming to see all of us. And... They apps this dog absolutely loves Spike and Spike apps and Spike. By the way, guys, is our house dog. Um, we um, at the shop. Yeah, at, at the, the shop. shop. Um, Keith rescued him from the pound, and he was an actual grooming customer of ours. Everything went sour, so Keith ended up with Spike. So Spike's our house dog that greets everybody. Um, so when this one customer comes in with their dog, Spike and this dog play around. It's their time together, and they have fun. So play dates are actually very common for dogs. Yeah. That, especially when the owners have fun, the dogs are chill and cool and laid back, and then they get together, and it, it makes, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, as a lot of people turn to dogs, if they don't want to have children or they cannot have children, they turn to dogs. And you can treat a dog the same way you would a child. I mean, there is absolutely zero difference between a child and and a dog they're you know you look at a child at three years of age same as a dog or younger and they understand somewhat of the right and wrongs but yeah they're they're not going to be a human intelligent they're not going to be able to solve world hunger yeah but you can get them to go and play with each other and have it's great interactions for the actual people as well the owners because then you can have you know sit down have a cup of coffee you can, you know, enjoy company of another human while your dogs are enjoying time together. Exactly. I'm looking at this video. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's taking so long to rinse this D shed stuff out. Trust this me, I know. White foamy stuff. I'm like, and this one's um, a sibling that I did the day before. Uh, I, it took so long to rinse. Did I tell you this? It took so long to rinse that the water heater ran out of hot water. Oh my gosh! Really? I didn't yes. know that. The 50-gallon oh. water heater ran out. And what was great is that it ran out right as I was done. Oh, you were lucky. I was lucky. And it, oh my gosh, the, it was horrible. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, one thing about this type of dog. For any anybody who actually works in this industry will tell you, any kind of de shed is a lot of work. It is just the, you know, I was... As I'm filming, I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, I'm exhausted. And I, I don't even remember what day it came in. I don't know if it was an early part of the week. I think it was early in the week. And I'm just thinking, this is the kind of dog you really don't know if you want it early or end of the week because there's so much that's going into it. And, you know, I'm editing this as well because, obviously, if I don't cut different parts, all you're going to watch is me washing and washing and washing. And, you know, a dog like this, it takes hour. 20 minutes usually because you've got two baths to give it essentially it's two especially baths. with the uh the d shed on it oh mm-hmm. man and and it you know this dog is really good it actually moves when you need it to it's not not hyper really well behaved and to give folks an estimate here um now remember where we live is um a small place in missouri and uh we price things accordingly properly uh her bath, brush, de-shed solution, de-shed, her nails, um, her ear cleaning, her sanitary trim with feet trimmings because her hair gets a little uh, grinchy. Yep. So we trim up 
it to look more like a cat is what they call it, you know, cat paw. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they reference a cat with dog. Anywho. Um, I like clean feet. Let's take it. No, clean feet shape. But I, I, but I still like the term. Well, yeah, because you think you're cleaning up the foot. I, that's, that's why I, I, I don't like the fact that they limit it to one thing. I just think it's... it's just, uh, that's... I, I, that's, that's, that's tradition for I all these decades and centuries. I know. Anyhow, um, so with everything to keep this pup healthy and de shed, uh, we're looking at $60. Yep. Is how much we charge and for her. And of course, don't forget, ear, ears are done. Yeah, I already said that. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, and she is a smaller Bernie's, uh, but they had, um, there was another Bernie's that, that came in. He died not too long ago, unfortunately saddest situation uh his name was boomer the big huge huge bernese mountain dog gorgeous just ginormous loving caring oh he just wanted to play it all he wanted to do and his owner came in to tell us that he passed away from bloat yeah yeah that happened from bloat and these stories started popping up i started reading more about bloat um, online and I told Keith I said Keith we need to get slow feeders in here we got to do something to help these folks out with all these big dogs that just scarf down their food and sure enough we got a bunch of these um, in and we're selling them left and right um, we just wish that we could have gotten hold of Boomer's dad a little bit sooner than that yeah so, and that's the hard part And but then again if you didn't listen to last week's episode about the lawsuit the class action with Karina you know sometimes they don't have to eat fast it could just be it's just bad food it's just bad food and so you know for a bigger one like boomer that would be more along the 70 75 dollar range and like i said this is for a small town in missouri Mm -hmm. this isn't talking about anywhere big metropolis or st louis or or la LA. anaheim anything like that so prices will vary but even in a small place like us it's still anywhere between sixty to seventy-five dollars. Yeah, and we've heard Massachusetts is high, New York is high, yeah. Los Angeles is high. I'm pretty sure Miami would be high. See, we we charge forty-five dollars to groom a cocker spaniel, a basic groom. It's all over haircut, but basic everything. Um, forty-five dollars. And my one customer that has been seeing me since I first moved here, uh, when they used to live out in Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Hardest word to say. I know, right? They were spending um, a total of 140 each time they went in to get groomed, and he only had two cockers. That's amazing. Yeah, Isn't that insane. It might have been more or less 130, but still, well, Hawaii, I would have been at 90 dollars for two. Hawaii is also very expensive. Right. So just keep in mind um, your place where you're at and how much it is. Uh, but this stuff, no, I need to kiss. Um, this stuff isn't cheap. No, it's and not. It's not easy. Well, the upkeep of a, of a dog, and this is where, you know, if you already own a Bernese or you're actually thinking of adopting, you know, no way, shape, or form is it a bad idea. It's more or less a question of, is what what is my financials? And I think that's kind of where we've always taken these videos. You know, we've obviously been doing this show in audio form for a year. Um, doing these videos, kind of giving you different ideas of different breeds, um, one thing that, that we've actually been picking up over the last uh, few weeks of doing these, uh, people who actually were in love with a specific breed, um, we've had emails and messages from people saying, you know, I'm, I'm such a huge fan of, for example, our first one was a Great Pyrenees, our very mm-hmm. first of the year we started these video podcasts, and we get this email saying, you know, I love Great Pyrenees, um, I've always wanted one, I'm a, a huge fan, um, and it, you know, don't get me wrong I don't blame you one bit but the the sad part was is the reaction was I came to realize that between the financials and the upkeep it's just probably not in my price range and it's very understandable yeah because the food for these guys is, is a lot <laughs> right and well it's it's it's, it's, it's that, a lot <laughs> it's the food it's the upkeep it's the time I mean and some... then if you if you're wanting to uh, feed raw diet yeah. Then that's going to be even more expensive. But yeah, at the same time, you feed raw diet, um, and you properly introduce it to them so you don't shock their system. But they're you save money on their teeth. Yes. You save money on quite a few things, and and the risk of bloat blow is so much lower. So all in all, sometimes going uh, going absolutely raw 
And I'm not talking organic. I didn't even realize I had playback going on. Huh? I had playback, so I knew where my camera was. It's you can't see it. I I saw it, but I had my playback screen. Oh, on your phone? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Odd. I didn't realize that I had put it there. <laughs> uh, there there's here's right now you're gonna notice on the drying portion. Um, you're gonna notice that I do have the actual lead that's on her. Here, her? Yeah. Okay, I was right. Okay. She's a little girl. Um, I it was a while ago. I we did this. I, I forget at this point. You know, you think about 35, 40 dogs a week, and this is already two weeks ago. Um, you start to lose track at this point. But um, like I always, I'm always trying to say this: you got to make sure when you're doing a dry like this, you have safety. Safety is, of course, your number one concern. You got to make sure that they're not going to get out. They're feeling safe. They're not going to hurt themselves. Um, and, you know, these are very important things. They need to know that there's there's give. And you can tell, test it, that theory. Um, but needs to know that there's give. But at the same time, they also have to know, okay, I'm, I'm here. I have a, I have a two... You can tell there's a two um, yeah. system for me. I want to make sure there's safety. Um, kind of Katana was the one who taught me that one because Katana can get really um, antsy when she wants to. Well, when you're in any kind of high traffic dog uh, area, you know, some people in some places, some boarding places, they'll take a huge group of dogs and let them all play together. Let, you know, they, they most of the time, like a big, huge dog bark, they're fine. I get a little nervous. I do too. I have not seen that happen very often other than the actual dog parks I've been to. So I get a little nervous. I want to make sure every dog is segregated and secure so they don't hurt themselves. And the risk of them meeting nose to nose and something bad happening is a minimal. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we make sure, okay, this is where you're supposed to be. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal. You don't want to be there. But... Well, it'll get you through. I think most dogs actually at the beginning are a little, I, don't, I wouldn't say standoffish, more curious of what, what is this? I don't understand this situation I'm in. And then, by the way, she is quite young. I think she's less than two. You no, know, she's less than a year old or about a year old. Because I remember when they bought her. And I, I think I just started working at Shadowwood when they bought her. So she's only about a year, maybe two at best. Yeah. So she's not even fully grown, and she doesn't understand and comprehend as much. Well, but as you can tell, though, she does really well. She's not not trying to get loose. She's very well behaved. She's she's used to it. And see, these dogs are so amazing, um, so well behaved if trained properly. Mm -hmm. You just gotta give it a little time, like any dog. But our buddy Rena and Randy. Yes. We had Rena yes. on our podcast. So Last year? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember the episode, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, she was there to pick up her Bernese puppy. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I see pictures of Charlotte <laughs> all the time with her two young kids. Yep. And um, Griffin and Ariel just absolutely love Charlotte. Charlotte took to them right away and mothered them ever since. And they play so nicely together. Yeah, Charlotte gets a little rambunctious. Charlotte, she's getting Charlotte bored. used to be small, smaller than them. Yeah, now she's, she's towered them. <laughs> yeah, she's she's pretty big now, and uh, she's got a little case of boredom going on. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> but uh, Charlotte is absolutely fantastic with those kids, and those kids are are loud. I love you, Rena. I love you. I don't think she want listens okay. to us. Our friends don't listen to us. I, I, it, here's she the, listens to the podcast. Does she really? Yeah. I did not know that. I thought that I thought none of our friends listen to us. I don't think she us. knows anything about the podcast. Of course she does. She's on my Facebook. Well, I don't think she pays attention. I don't think anybody pays attention to me. All right. So, um, uh, her kids are loud, they move fast, and they play hard. And uh, Charlotte's in there for the long haul. She oh. loves it. She doesn't care. She's like, yeah, buddy, yeah, let's give, go. Give me more. I know, uh, it's it's. I I yeah. I'm just now now I'm just thinking about her picking up that dog, her Randy, and I was like, oh, that was so cool. Uh, you know, funny part, funny side story. Getting Sarah to actually agree to to do that that podcast to convince you was just impossible. You were impossible. just like, I, 
You it didn't want to do it. It was impossible to convince her to do it. Oh, well, then it got to be rough. Then it was like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, no, you're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. She was like, no more hoodie. I'm done. <laughs> and and But as you can tell, that's where the second uh, hoop thing, if you look, the actual one from the bath is gone. Yeah, it's off now. <laughs> but the other one, it's still there. That's why. That's that's called the safety See, method for this me. This face says, why can't we just play? Mm. Why can't we just go and do something fun? Come on. On. The Where's wall, my sister? The wall also says, hey, look, you got lots of uh, my fur. Yeah. Oh, we were picking up Bernie's hair for I think days. I'm still, I think I'm still finding it in areas. Oh, my gosh. The first one was... I really wish we had the GoPro for the first one. You would really have seen the amount of hair that flew off. Um, but between her and her sibling, it was just everywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was in every little deepest, darkest crevice in that place. Oh, my gosh. And we keep the bathing room uh, spot on because, you know, we want people to come in and we want people to see what the, you know, what their dog is going to go through and where it's at and get, you know, walk through. We actually encourage it. Yeah, see, what we like to do, too, uh, when it comes to their de-shedding is that we want to make sure the hair comes off mostly in the bathtub yeah you know for nice. one it's easier for us to clean up and two we get most of that dirt dirty hair off so we can get the soap to that hair underneath and clean it as well as we possibly can so then when it comes to drying we don't have a snowstorm yeah th we didn't have as much this time if you look around you don't see it kicking up and that's because we slick her in the bathtub while it's all nice and sudsy. Uh, we're moving our hands across the body, rinsing it off our hands. So we're doing so much of the deshedding while they're in the bathtub versus blowing it off and, and having this huge snow, snowstorm in the entire bathing room area. Or, you know, shop, because it gets everywhere. It, it gets does. underneath the door, it gets into the shop, it gets into the small breed den. Yeah, They're it, always yelling at us, clean up your hair. <laughs> well, we actually, that's the, the nice part is we, where we're at now with the renovations, we don't have as, we don't have that, that problem like we used to. Right. That was the hard part with the original setup. We had small breed, we had the grooming, you know, for the bathing area. We had everything kind of mashed in. Well, yes, we had um, our bathing room. People had to, when they wanted to go through, uh, go do a walkthrough and see our facilities, they had to walk past our bathing room. And it could be right at that point where we had the, you know, five-coated dog, you know, five -coated dog. ever, you know, bred in its life. We had it there and there's hair everywhere. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing a grizzly bear at the moment. It, and exactly. And it's just it's happens flying to be, around. Yeah. It just happens to be the time that we have a walkthrough. Actually, that, that does happen. That did happen a great deal where, you now, know. We're in our own little area, and we don't have to worry about that. And then the dogs still have to get worried with, oh, who's that? Who's that over there? It is I distracting. Wanna, yeah, yeah, I want to go play with that person. What I want to smell them. Yeah, I want to smell them, you know. Hi, my name's so-and-so. Yeah. My <laughs> name's Dog. Love you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a smart and wonderful master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that is the hard part with it all. Is this, that is, like Sarah said, it's very difficult because people actually... They expect to see a nice, clean bathing room, and it's it's almost impossible. If you have two, three, four big dogs, you have, you know, when Craig's there working, I'm doing things. You know, you have, in a day's time, 10-plus dogs going through one bathing area. Yeah. You can have a walkthrough at 1 o'clock, and, oh, boy, it's it's a snow globe. And when, you know, so we the best way to get around that is to really brush them out before the bath mm -hmm. brush out and it helps get the dirt off it helps spread the oils around and you can really get in tune on what's underneath all that undercoat and uh, by doing it that way especially folks at home get the undercoat out first because that's that much hair that you're not washing that's that much hair that ha that does not need to be dried and it's the shampoo got that much closer to the skin Yep. And conditioning the skin like it's supposed to. So. Um, one of the hardest parts about doing something at home is not being able to really get to that, that layer, get past the, the two layers to skin. Um, that That's the rough part. I mean, I I wouldn't want to do any kind of baths at home, but that's just me. I mean, you can say it's because I've actually done it in this type of environment. Um, I, I wouldn't do it. 
personally I just wouldn't um, yeah you know as we said you know the cost can be a little bit up there but at the end it's still beneficial to you you know they say you can actually wash a Bernese Mountain Dog uh, for three to, to every three to six weeks four to six weeks I don't typically care for the four week part unless they absolutely have a necessity like a, a skin allergy um, has problems with fungus you know because we do have dogs that come in once a week with antifungal shampoo um, it's coming I would, soon I know right that's next week uh, so it's important to actually space them out so six weeks okay you know yeah not a problem I just want to do the degreaser every time maybe every other eight weeks yeah sure come on in we'll get your pup all, all spiffied up so as much as we would love to see $60 come in every four weeks we're not going to misguide you yeah that's the other part you don't want we don't want everybody to think oh well that that's a necessity you have to your, your biggest necessity with a dog, with a Bernese, that you're going to have to actually worry about is, of course, you got to think about nutrition. I mean, the, the as you read at the opening when we did the, the synopsis of this breed, it doesn't live for a great deal of time. Six to eight years, I think, is what it, it actually stipulates. So you don't have a lot of time. So you want to make sure you get as much as you can with this type of dog. Nutrition's obviously going to stretch it as far as you can. Um, the next thing is you want to get it as much exercise as you possibly can. Um, yeah, because even if their lifespan is six to eight years, it's the quality of life yeah. that they're they're you know living. Um, yeah, you can feed them old Roy, and they might still live to six to eight years, but that might be a very sluggish six eight years it could be a painful six eight years it could be a very downward spiral at the end but if you were to feed them their raw diet a holistic diet or a very high um high star food yeah. you know you can go from i mean even diamond natural it's a, a lower end um but still fantastic food and then you can go with something better of Nutrisource, Pure Vita, uh, and so on. I mean, you can, there's so many good foods out there. There should be no excuse to buy you the food at grocery store if you can prevent it. So by feeding a quality food, the dog's going to have a happier eight years than a slow, sluggish, we'll see if we get there. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want your dog to just barely, you know, surpass that, that six to eight. You want to make sure it's got a quality. And you want to make sure the food that you get them has some kind of um, a joint health yep. additive to it. Um, if it doesn't, then the glucosamine. Mm -hmm. Make sure you give them a supplement because these big dogs, they're carrying a lot of weight on those hips. Mm -hmm. And they're oh, moving that's where I was around. Gonna go with so uh, you really need to supplement them for stuff to help them live a quality eight years and not like i said painful yeah and, uh, and that's gonna that's gonna be your big part here um quality of life is gonna be hips joint um even weight management all of these things are very important with this type of dog with any kind of big dog i mean this is one of the things that by doing these videos, by doing these, you know, audio commentaries over, we're giving you guys, you know, here's everything. You, you, and then, of course, you get the opportunity to see the kind of work that goes into a groom. So you really get that, that full hands-on experience. Exactly. Like, um, Akitas, they're known to have some really bad hips and joint problems up the wazoo. So uh, they have a longer lifespan up to about 12 years sometimes. Um, and sometimes even longer than that. But um, the Diamond Natural that we're feeding our dogs has the glucosamine in mm -hmm. it. And eventually we'll be feeding a little bit more, um, meaning um, uh, dietary supplements. I mean, Roxy's getting up there in age. She's got all kinds of white starting in our muzzle. So it's Katana. Thing. Katana's getting there, but she's still not really. She's only like five. She might be six. Yeah, we have her AKC She's stuff. a year younger than Claire. She's five. Okay. She just turned five in November. So she's got some time. But um, got to pay attention. Really get to know your dog. Uh, 
watch how they play. Watch how much they play. If they start changing any any way, if they get slug sluggish. Hi, or, I'm Sarah Green, <laughs> and I speak English. Take some days. Tongue ring out every once in a while. Um, and just kind of monitor them. Always keep a visual eye out on how they're acting, why they're acting that way, and it really, really connects that bond between owner and dog. Yeah, uh, very much so. Um, it's like, a, you know, let's go back to when I say dogs are just like kids. You know, you're watching your child to make sure it stays healthy. You're watching your dog to make sure it stays healthy. You know, one thing, the difference, if you're a predominant cat owner and you're, you know, transferring over to, you know, having a dog, the difference that you're going to find with a dog to a cat is dogs require a great deal. Cats require very little and the only time that they require something is when they tell you, okay, I want you to pet my head or I'm going to lay on you. But for the most part, they're self-sufficient. Dogs just don't have that ability. You, you want to know what Rambo did to me yes, last night? I don't know. Okay, for all you who don't know who Rambo is, Rambo's our, our kitten that we almost ran over that thank you to Pical for helping us get him back to health. Health up to... Back to health. <sighs> Nursed back to health. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, you do and speak here, English sometimes. he is just this big fat cat that we need to put on a diet because his head's smaller than his body. It's absolutely adorable. Well, he climbed, he jumped on me really? last night in the middle of the night. Just landed on my gut. Oh, and it Ugh. hurts. I, it was yeah. like a bowling ball. It is. Ugh. So I thought you should know that. You beware uh, for pouncing black cats um well actually i had i had mama kitty decide that she wanted to jump on top of me and turn on her motor really loud it sounded like a harley on, oh, in she my ear is so loud and she does the whole kneading you know one thing about recording a show out in the world out of, out of your your normal studio element is you have a lot of different things that you get to look at here and it's distracting <laughs> so, yeah. It was like like that guy in that that, that horrible print. <laughs> was like, You're still on that. It's it's the it's the random boom kind of things oh, that gets it was, me. It was hey, look at the bad. wall. It's it's absolutely covered in hair, furry walls. <laughs> and mind you, after we're done with the washing and blow drying, and once she gets the the what we call the octopus or the grizzly bear. I don't like grizzly bear. I just don't understand why they called it that. I love octopus. I never understood why would you Well, call it's called it? grizzly bee air. Yeah, so just... when you say it fast, it's grizzly bear. But it's called grizzly. I just think it's, that's stupid. It's this big, huge thing. You can see it every once in a while when you look upwards towards the door. You can see it on top of the, the kennels. And it's got three arms that extend down to help blow um, air into the kennel that is just sucking the air that's already there not warming it not cooling it it's just room temperature air it's sucking in and blowing out um i use these my entire grooming career <laughs> these things are amazing they use it's this amazing. It's amazing but they use these to like dry off floors and stuff at hospitals or ah, at walmart yeah, and, yeah. and such but um we put a couple of those on Call it good. Let her sit, relax, take a nap. Yeah, it's actually the cool down, pretty much. Um, yeah, just because... let them relax, because sometimes this is a lot of energy for them, and they need a nap. Yep, and and most of the time that's what happens. I mean, you you know you can start to tell the dog is you know at the point where it's saying, okay, I'm I'm kind of done. You know, this has gone on for a long time. Um, one thing that I always you know try to point out is you want to get all the nooks and crannies. You don't want the dog laying in a wet spot. You don't want to just wash a dog and throw it in a kennel and let the kennel do all the work. I mean, that is just lazy grooming right there. Um, you need to actually put the effort out. You, you, the customer, you're the one that's paying us to do this. You want to know that you're getting your money's worth. And you want to know that the groomer that you're taking your dog to is up to date on safety. Um, if you have a dog that has a problem with collapsed trachea, oh boy. that means you shouldn't blow dry, kennel dry him. Yeah. That's constant air moving around. Um, you don't want to put 15 dryers on one kennel. Um, one thing if you notice with our kennels, there's no enclosed. We have a couple enclosed crates uh, for holding. Yeah. But those aren't what we really use to blow dry. Nope. All our blow drying or kennel drying crates are all open. So the air can 
push out and not just stay in this one little area. Yeah, that would dry, would dry them up so much quicker, but it doesn't help um, with the dog's health. So this way they have this area where they can put their little head in, that they don't have anything blowing at their face. Um, you want to know if the dog's a senior dog, that it doesn't have kennel dryers on it. Um, if it has problems with seizures, make sure yeah, that there's going. only maybe one dryer on and not you know, two or three. Some people would take every single dryer they own and put it on one kennel. And that is not us. And you want to make sure that they know and they understand, too, that the groomer that you take your dog to. Hey, how do you dry? What do you do after you're done drying? How do you kennel dry? The more knowledge you have, the better relationship you'll have with your groomer. <laughs> and... Oh, that was Dixie. That was Dixie. Yep. Oh, my Dixie girl. That's a sad story right there, though. Dixie, I have been grooming Dixie for, oh, five years now. And she was one of my very first golden retrievers I did here in Missouri. Um, she used to see me over at my other shop. And then they were thrilled when I went to Shadowwood because they boarded with Shadowwood. And then they had to take her over to me to get groomed. Well, now it's just one stop. Um... Dixie was diagnosed with bone cancer in her front left leg. Um, they said amputation at her age is not an option. And that to love her and cherish her for as long as the painkillers will last. But that's, that's my girl right there. And the sweetest owners in the world, sweetest dog in the world. She would jump up on the table from the ground floor if she, if she was able to now. She used to do it a couple years ago. Without me even asking, she would just jump, and I turn around. <gasps> oh my gosh, she jumped! Oh my gosh, don't do that. <laughs> well, Wait for me. <laughs> and we we've unfortunately faced a great deal of dogs that have had bone cancer, and and it is the hardest thing that you can actually face. But it's you know unfortunately that's a part of, of owning a dog too is that you could run into this. You know, by no means do we ever discourage anybody from adopting a dog. I mean, it is the greatest, the greatest opportunity you have. Um, you know, it, like I've said, I said this already like two, three times. If you can't have kids, you don't want to have children. You, the actual quality of life you get with a dog is just insurmountable. So, I think we're coming to that. We're going to come to the end of this episode. Um, we hope that we've actually given you guys some good insight to owning an actual Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh, and by the way, don't get Bernese Mountain Dogs mixed up with the... the, the St. Bernard? No, the Swedish Mountain Dogs, because the, they look kind of alike, but they're smooth-coated and ah. they're smaller. It's, yeah. Sometimes people get confused on the same coloring and the same shape, but two different types of breeds. Just don't get confused. Do your research on the breed. And... Uh, and if you're worried about cost, call your local um, uh, kennel mm. or feed store and find out how much it would be to feed them and really plan it out. Yeah, you know, if, if we're their first stop that you've actually made to listen to, you know, a podcast dedicated to this specific breed, uh, we've given you, you know, some insight to it. But yeah, you know, adopting a dog requires a great deal of research do your homework make sure this is the perfect breed for you um, look back on our other dogs that we've done so far this year we have five other dogs besides this one and we're going to bring you more of course and if you guys are good we will try to record our um uh, enzo our um, great dane uh, puppy yes but i don't know when that's coming up monday tomorrow yes oh gosh then that means i'm gonna have to pull things okay I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me that now. It's not like I don't have a lot of work ahead of me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. And I'm Sarah Green. Make sure everybody realizes life is so short. Play with your pet. Bye-bye, everybody.